what you can do, which makes it easier, is press all in So if you want to finish your samples and beats way faster and way quicker, this is the perfect video for you. Yo, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make samples and beats way, way quicker and how to get a better workflow overall. So first of all, I'm going to show you our sample. And then after that, I will explain which shortcuts I use. And then after that, I will open up another beat and I will show you which shortcuts I use for the beat. So basically in this video, you will learn everything about important shortcuts in FL Studio. And by the way, thank y'all for 2.5k. We just hit it on Thursday. I'm really glad y'all enjoying the content and make sure to keep going make sure to like this video make sure to comment something cool or like future video ideas and obviously make sure to subscribe and activate the bell and yeah guys let's go And if you want to get an in-depth breakdown to this sample, make sure to leave a like and to comment it so I can make it for next week's video. The first shortcut I will show y'all is the shortcut Alt and S, which does one basic and simple thing, but it's so effective while making samples and it makes the sample sound so much more realistic. And what it basically does, as you can see here, it basically just strums the sample. So I just put the notes on the grid and what Alt and S does, I will show y'all, is just strum it as i said and it makes the sample so much more realistic because if you're playing a real piano you don't hit every note on the same time and the settings i have for the strumizer is basically just play with this knob and have the preserve end on i turned the end section off because i basically don't need it the chop chords and alternate direction is off too and this is how it sounds without the strumming and this is how the piano pattern sounds with the strumming And then straight to the next one, which is Alt and R, which basically just randomizes the velocity from the notes. Because again, if you play a piano, you don't hit every note with the same, I would say, power. So what it does, as you can see over here, it basically just obviously randomizes the velocity from the notes. So this F6 is louder than the D5, which makes the whole thing sound more realistic again. And this is the shortcut I use in every sample I make, because it's so important to make samples sound more realistic. And this is how the randomizer looks like. And you just gotta turn the pattern off the levels on for me personally i have the bipolar off and i'll play it in a second but for the next shortcut which you can do so let's say you have it like this where you have the velocity on complete down and you can't really hear some of these notes and you press accept by accident obviously you can press ctrl and z but that obviously makes the velocity sound normal again and what you can do also is press alt and the left mouse button and then just drag over right here and every velocity will get up again on its default setting. And now I'm gonna show you all the difference between having the velocities on default and randomizing the velocities. So this is the velocity with no changes. And this is the velocity randomized and you will hear the difference. It sounds way more realistic and it sounds like this. Now for the next thing which is very very important is let's say you want to cut something you don't have to click on the slice tool right here you can either press alt and c or what you can do too is press the right mouse button and then the scroll wheel on an empty space and then just scroll to these tools as you can see right here and then you just get to the slicing tool and what you have to do is don't have it on none i have it on main because it's way simpler for me and i work with that all the time and let's say i want to cut this which you can do you don't have to drag it like this and then it gets like messed up as you can see right here you can just press the shift key and then the right mouse button and as you can see it gets like red right here instead of blue and it will cut a straight line all the time so you can't really mess it up as i said if you want to cut something out press shift and the right mouse button and then just drag it over here and the smaller part will get cut out so let's say i want to cut this out i'll just press shift and right mouse button right here 
or let's say I want to cut it in the middle, then the right part gets cut out. But if the right part is a bit longer than the left part, the left part will get cut out. It's just common sense and it helps my workflow a lot because let's say I wanted to cut it right here, but it cut not even on grid, but it cut it right there. I don't have to drag it manually and put it on the grid. As I said, I just have it on main, press Alt and C and then either press the right mouse button or the left mouse button. It depends on what you want to do, but that one was a game changer for me. Then for the next thing, you don't have to click on this record button right here. You can just press Alt and R, but just in a playlist because as I said, right here, it will just randomize the velocities, but you can just press Alt and R, as I said, and it turns on the recording right there, as you can see, and it's so much more simple than pressing the record button every time. And the same thing you can do in the mixer. So let's say I want to render out my piano. I just click on this arm, this recording button, and then press Alt and R again. And then as you can see, you can copy these settings, but the rendering mixer track option comes up, and I will just select this section right here and have nothing on. So basically just this piano will get recorded. And as you can see, now the piano is right here and this helps a lot when you have a high cpu usage this makes your pc just run way way faster so if i just record everything right here i have my whole sample right there just not in midis and not with the plugins and it sounds the same obviously as you can hear So it doesn't make any difference besides having your CPU usage that high. So then for the next thing, we are in a piano roll again. And let's say I don't want this note to be strummed. I basically just select it with control and the left mouse button. And then I just press shift and the mouse wheel and the note will slide on the grid again. But not automatically, you can do it manually, obviously. If you want the note to be right here, you can do that. And if you want the note to be in front, you can do that as well. But that's something that helps me a lot by making samples because I can just adjust the strumming effect, which makes it so much more simple to make samples sound realistic. Then for the next thing, which isn't really a shortcut, but it helps your workflow so, so much, is just selecting this paint tool right here. And instead of clicking the heights in manually, you can just press on this paint tool right here and just drag your height roll in, as you see right here. And if you press shift with it, as it says, you can shift the notes down or even up. Plus, if you press shift, you can even make the roll go down, as you see right here. And as you can see, it will make height rolls way easier. Another technique to make height rolls is first press Ctrl and L, so it makes the notes long. And then you can press Alt and A, and this window will come up and you can play with the time mule, which decides how long your roll will be or how quick your roll will be. And you can just copy these settings to make height rolls way simpler. And now let's go on to the next shortcut. So now we are back in the piano roll from the sample. And if you have a melody where you think it could sound cool reverse, you can either just render it out and reverse it, obviously. But what you can do, which makes it easier, is press Alt and Y and the sample will get flipped like this. And as you can see, it's just a simpler way to flip the samples and to reverse the samples. And now for this shortcut, which helps me a lot by stemming out my samples, is the Shift and F shortcut in the new FL21. So as you can see, if you want these fade options on, so if you want to fade something in and out, you can just press Shift and F, as I said, and it will just come up. And if you don't want it, because let's say if you select the whole sample and then you want to drag it, but accidentally drag the fade knob right here, it will mess up everything and it's just annoying. So if you want to stem out your samples, press Shift and F and you can just drag them around how you like it because yeah i will show it again if you press shift and f by accident or you just have it on by default and you want to drag the sample it could happen that you use the fade options and it's an annoying thing that you can just turn off with one shortcut so yeah guys if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like and to subscribe to my channel make sure to activate the bell as well and to comment either if you want a part two of this video or just comment some future video ideas i'd really appreciate that make sure to follow me on my socials the links for that will be in my description and thank you for all this love and yeah guys see you